So it says here that there is a triangle ABC and we need to calculate the value of X. Now notice here that this is a bit weird because you can see that X is opposite this length here. However, opposite the angle there is no length no, and opposite this length there is no angle. But if we take it one step at a time, we can probably realize that if we use the cosine rule to find this unknown length, then we're going to have a matching pair of length to angle, length to angle to use the sine rule. So to, rule, to recall, the sine rule looks like this. We have the formula in the back, in the front of the book, but it's going to be a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. My tip is to always relabel this diagram, I mean relabel the triangle to match these letters. So in this case, because we're working with angle A, we're going to cross this letter out and call this angle A. And this is going to be equivalent to little a, meaning these two lengths would be B or C. Okay, so doing so, replacing little a with y, so it would be y squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C cos uh, 110. By the way, these two are stuck, so you just multiply, yeah? 5.3 to that. Now, putting this all in your calculator, square rooting it, because remember, you got y squared. To get y, you need to square root. And you're going to get 7.73. That's the three significant figures, yeah? Dot, dot, dot. So that's the length of y. Now, now we've got the length of y. Let's go ahead and re-sketch this, yeah, with update diagram. So we're going to have a triangle here. Length is 7.73. We're trying to find angle X, so we need a matching um, length to angle X, which is 5.3, to use a sine rule, by the way. And opposite 7.73, we need a matching angle, which is 110. So, 1, 1, 0. Now, a quick recap here. Sine rule is also in the back of the book, but I'll label it, I'll put it right here. It tells us that you can pick, so in this case, because we want to find angle, we can say that we have sine A over little a is equal to the sine of an angle big B equal over little b. Now we just pick anything. So you just match them up. So we're going to pick big A as x, which is going to match with little a 5.3. So sine of x over 5.3 is going to equal the other side, sine of 110 over its length, opposite length 7.73. Now all you want to do is solve for x. So we just want to clear this fraction to make sine x a subject. So times in 5.3 across, we're going to have sine x equals sine 110 over 7.73 times 5.3. And putting all this in a calculator, you should get 0 0.64 dot dot dot. And now to get the angle x, you need to get rid of the sine. And to do it, you need to sine inverse. So you've got to use the sine negative 1. So shift sign 0.64. So just put shift sign inverse answer, sign inverse answer. And you should finally get to, what is it? Three sig fig, um, 40.1 degrees. And that's it guys, this is done. Okay, number 18. So the graph of y equals fx is shown on the grid. Okay, so it looks like we've got a parabola, a nice quadratic curve, yeah? Now, part A. On the grid above, sketch the graph of y equals the function at half x. Okay, so there's a few rules for this one, and this is actually a really nice way of doing it. When you get a function of, say, ax, all that literally means that you've got to divide x coordinates by a. And if you've got something like x plus a, you subtract. So in essence, whatever is inside the bracket, inside the function, you do the opposite way it tells you. Literally here, whatever they tell you, do the opposite. So if it said 2x divided by 2, 3x divided by 3, because it's half x divided by half or opposite times it by 2, that's the same thing. Dividing by half times it by 2 is the same. So essentially for every x coordinate here on the graph, we're going to times it by 2. So let's have a go. So we can say that this coordinate here, which is by the way minus 1 for x, is going to go appear here now at minus 2. This coordinate here, which is at 0, stays at 0. This corner here, which is at 1, is double to 2. This corner is at 2, doubles to 4. Uh, this corner here, which is at 3, doubles to 6. 
just find anything that intersects. This coordinate at 4 stretches to 8. This coordinate at minus 2 doubles to minus 4. Um, and that's it. Now all you want to do is just get rid of all of these um, pen marks. Well, I do at least. Um, and now, just connect them up. So you're gonna get, you have to get a parabola. So it's gonna be kind of hard. <sighs> okay, and that. Okay, so something like that. Nice, <laughs> hopefully smoother curve than this, guys. Yeah. Okay, let's look at next bit. So the graph of y equals f x plus k. So it's essentially what I said here. So if it's x plus a, you subtract x coordinate by a, so subtract by k. Okay, so we can see that, I'm guessing it's the same curve here. Yep, it looks the same. If I write down the value k. So let's see where it moved. So let's, let's just, let's just um, focus on this right-hand side here. Yeah? See how we get, how we got to zero. So it traveled from three. Yep, so easy. It moved three across. So k is going to be three. So g is the function of domain x greater or equal to negative 3, such that gx equals this quadratic function. Now, domain, guys, is simply the values that x is allowed to take in a function. So, for example, this graph here, if we factorize it and, you know, found out where it hits the x-axis, it will look a bit like this, okay? Now, when it says x greater or equal to negative 3, this means that we only care about the curve after x equals minus 3, which is around there. So, this part. So after minus three onwards, okay? We don't care about the left-hand side at all. So according to this question, it says write down the range of G, the inverse of G. Now, there's a rule here. If you know the domain of a function, then the range of its inverse is equal. So therefore we can say that, oops, that Y is gonna be greater or equal than minus three, which is the range bit. That's it. Now, B, <clears throat> express the inverse function, so g minus 1, into the usual form. So this literally means um, express it into this form. That's just another way. This is just notation-based. Now, to do this one, and this is such an easy way, you look at the, the g function and just replace all the x's with y. So that's how you do the inverse. So we're going to have g y equals y squared plus 6y. And now, make it equal to x okay so here's our function it's going to be this now this one is actually a lot more challenging than the other ones we've seen before in, in any textbooks even at a level standard so the way to do this and it's quite brutal is to either use a completing the square method or use the quadratic formula now and that yeah guys that's really it you gotta use the quadratic formula so let's let's have a go at this yeah so what we could do is this we can say all right let y squared plus 6y and this time minus x equals zero now using the quadratic formula we're going to have so we're going to make y the subject here so be y equals minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a where a is going to be one so the number in front of y squared which is just one b which is going to be six because of six y and C is going to be weird. It's going to be minus X. We're going to see what happens and why this is. Again, this is a weird question and it's worth four marks, which is why it's like that. Now, replacing what we know with um, the quadratic formula, we're going to have minus six plus minus um, square root of B squared, which is six squared, which is 36 minus. Now, it's better you do this at once. So you've got four times one, which is four times minus X. It would be f minus minus four X. So it'd be plus 4x and it's going to be all over 2a which is 2 times 1 which is 2 okay now next step here so now we need to do some factorization yeah so we got let's have a look so we've got firstly 6 let's let's tidy up the third over here yeah so we're going to have minus 6 plus minus now the root 36 plus 4x you can firstly do some factorization and factorize 4 out there so it'll be the square root of 4 bracket, and this would be 9 plus x over 2. And remember, this, you, because, uh, one rule of thirds, yeah, when you've got square root of a, b, 
This can be partitioned to the square root of a times the square root of b. In other words, your square root 4, your root 4 and 9 plus x can be partitioned as root 4 times the square root of 9 plus x. And we know the square root 4 is 2. So this means here that we're going to have minus 6 plus minus 2 times square root of 9 plus x over 2. And then sim uh, simplifying this, you're going to have minus 6 over 2, which is negative 3, minus 3. And now we're only going to keep the plus result. Why? It's because back in part A, we said that the range of the uh, G inverse, in other words, uh, what the values are allowed to take, has to be greater than equal to minus 3. We've already got minus 3 here. If we chose a minus sign, it means we're going to subtract some square root result, meaning the numbers going to get even smaller. So we've got to obey the, the conditions of the range. So that's going to be plus, and then these two cancel out, so 2 over 2 cancels out, and you're left with the square root of 9 plus x. Whew. See, this is, alright, this was brutal, guys. Now, there was the other method which was completing the square, and if you guys want me to go through it, I can do it in a separate video, so leave a comment for that, and um, or discuss in the comment section, and we can look into that. But otherwise, guys, I shall see you in the next one. So a bowl contains n pieces of fruits. Of these, four are oranges and the rest are apples. Okay, so visually, to understand this, so we've got a bowl here, and we've got four oranges, so let's say four oranges, and we can call that O, and we know that the difference between N and four are the remaining apples, so it'll be N minus four apples. Okay, so we're going to keep this right here. Now, two pieces of fruits are going to be taken at random, so you could either take one orange, one apple, or one apple, one orange, or two of oranges, or two apples. Now, the property that the bowl will then contain n minus six apples. So, if you're going to get from n minus four to n minus six, you would, you would have taken two apples in a row. Because take one more, you get n minus five. Take another one, n minus six left. And the property of doing that gives you a third. So, writing this as an equation, this means the property of picking an apple and another apple is going to be. Firstly, the first time you have n minus 4 out of a total of n times, and if you take an apple, you're going to be left with n minus 5, and of course, you've got one less fruit, so n minus 1, and all of this will give us a total probability of a third. And that's it, guys. This is the equation to work with. If you're able to follow this step, then all you have to worry about now is the algebra. Now, how to evaluate this easily? My tip is to firstly, is to literally just follow my steps here. <laughs> so all we have to do, guys, is multiply the top half, so n minus 4 times n minus 5, just leaving a bracket for now. And then n times n minus 1, you can stick them together. And what we're going to do, we're going to clear the fraction. So we're going to multiply these two bottom values across and 3 to the left. So times in 3 across, it will be here. Times in n and n minus 1 across, it will be here. 1 times these lot is the same thing. And now all we're going to do is fully expand these lot. So on the left hand side, we're going to leave the 3 out going to do n times n which is n squared so this is like a quadratic n times minus 5 is minus 5n minus 4 times n is minus 4n so combine them would be minus 9n's minus 4 times minus 5 is plus 20 and on the right side expanding the bracket you're going to have uh, n squared minus n and of course times it by 3 you can have 3n squared minus 9 times 3, 27n plus 60, equals the right-hand side. Okay, so if you look at this carefully, this is actually in the form of a quadratic. Let's move n squared and minus n to the left-hand side. So we need to subtract n squared and plus n. So this is going to give us 2n squared, and plusing n, it will be minus, it'll go up to minus 26n plus 60, and now we're going to have 0. Now you could go ahead and use a quadratic formula or you can make your life easy because you'll realize that all of these values are on the two times table. So half the equation, you're going to get n squared minus 13n plus 30 equals 0. You could use a formula, quadratic formula, no problem. Or you could actually just factorize it because this is actually, you're, able, you're actually able to factorize it. We need to look at two numbers that multiply to make 30. And we know straight off the head that's going to be 3 and 10. And we can notice that these two numbers, 3 and 10, you can subtract them from each other to get minus 13. So it would be n minus 3 and n minus 10. This means that when n minus 3 equals 0, n has to be 3. 
when n minus 10 equals 0, n has to be positive 10. And that's it, guys. It's going to be one of these values. Now, the question is, which is it? So, apparently, you got four fruits, and you have n all together, so it can't be n equals 3, because you already have enough oranges. So, the answer must be n equals 10. And I should go over here. And well, you get six marks for that. Damn. And here we go, guys. The final question of the paper. And just like the last sequence in June uh, 2018, this was also the final question. So it looks like arithmetic sequence always comes up at the end of the paper. But let's have a look at it. So it says 2x plus 23, 8x plus 2, and 20x minus 52 are three consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. Consecutive means each one follows on, like 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, or in 2s, 2, 4, 6. So that's what they pretty much mean here. Now, it, it wants us to prove that the common difference between each sequence is 12. So they're adding 12 each time. Now, to prove it, there's a nice trick here. You could say that, for instance, the difference of these two terms must equal the difference of the next two terms. That makes sense, because if you had something like 1, 4, 7, 10, we can see that the common difference is 3. Now, if you subtract each one, so let's say 4 take away 1, that must equal 7 take away 4, which must equal 10 take away 7, which is all 3 each. That's what they want us to see. So what we want to do here algebraically is subtract the common differences. So let's do 8x plus 2 minus the first term. So we're going to have something like 8x plus 2 minus 2x plus 23. And it has to equal... The difference of the other side, so 20x, I don't need to put brackets by the way for the first terms, minus 8x plus 2. And it looks like we're going to try and find the value of x here. So let's do it. So on the left hand side, 8x take away 2x is 6x. You can you could expand the bracket, it's up to you how you want to do this. 2 minus 23 is minus 21. Now on the right hand side, 20x take away 8x is 12x. Minus 52 minus plus 2, in other words, minus 2 is minus 54. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So what we could do is make x a subject. So let's make x a subject on the right-hand side. Because you've got 6x, which is smaller, and 12x, which is bigger. So subtracting 6x, on you can this go, this will disappear, and this will drop to 6x. Adding 54, this will disappear, and you add 54 here. So we're going to have 6x here. Uh, 54 minus 21 is 33. Oh, so now we want to divide this by 6. So x is going to equal 33 over 6. So 33, is that divisible by 6? It isn't, is it? 5.5. .5. Okay. I don't know. To me, this answer looked kind of wrong, guys. That's why I was a bit surprised. I was expecting a whole number. Anyway. Since x is 5.5, .5, let's go ahead and plug into the original values, yeah? So plug in 5.5 .5 for here, you're going to have uh, 2 times 5.5 .5 plus 23. This is going to become 34. Plug in 5.5 uh, .5 there. So let me just quick recap. x is 5.5. .5. We're going to plug this into all the equations, yeah? The common the difference is clearly 12 each time. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. You know, if you guys liked it and it was beneficial, please give me a like and uh, share with your friends and your classmates. You know, 